evening. My name is Chad Dell. I work here at Western as the Dean of the Learner Support and Transition Division, uh, the division which has the privilege of overseeing uh, the HSED and GED programs that you are all graduating from this evening. Um, before I share a few remarks, I'd just like to thank a few people. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the Holy Celtic Band for our music this evening. Put on a special night, and we really appreciate everything that Jessica does. Um, I also want to acknowledge my guests on stage. Our stage uh, party tonight consists of members of Western Senior Leadership Team, uh, representatives from the district board, um, our keynote speaker this evening, and my new friend Zoe, uh, who we've been hanging out and getting to know each other. And a long time ago in my career, not a lot of people have known this. Um, I was a daycare teacher, uh, so that's where I kind of started in education. So I thought I'd hang out with a four year old. That's a pretty good day for me. So we're glad to have her up. Um, this is my 17th GED graduation. You'd think eventually I'd get it right, but I'm still here. Um, and I say every year, and I mean it, this is my absolute favorite night of the year. Um, some of you I know better than others, but I know what it took for you to get here. Um, it's personal. Right? It's personal. Right? You folks had to work for this. Uh, and one of the things that's special about a GED graduation is that all of these folks came to be here with you. Um, in our office, we collect the invites that go out, and when you guys tell us you're coming and you, you share with us how many guests you have, uh, I won't out the individual who told us, but somebody in here brought 55 people, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Um, you should be proud of what you've done. What you did took effort. Those of you that took GED exams, I don't know that you know this, but the way they create those tests are they give them to high school seniors who are graduating from a traditional high school. And they make sure that the test is difficult enough that four out of 10 high school seniors would fail. So when you walk in somewhere with your GED, know that it's legit. Those of you that put in time and got the HSED, Almost everyone here that did that not only left with their HSED, they're leaving with college credit. That's a remarkable accomplishment. So take tonight and enjoy it. Maybe I stole a line from something I saw the other day, but maybe the world told you you were small. But tonight you stand tall. And it's beautiful that you're here with all the people around you that care so much. So I will tell you, our staff talks all the time about loving our students. Right? So why is this the best night of the year for me, selfishly? I get to look at a bunch of people that I got nothing but love for, who did something that really matters, and not only changed their story, but changed the story for everyone who comes after them. You have no idea the effect that you will have. So we are thrilled to have you here tonight, and we are in awe of what you've done. As a college, our president has challenged us to be a place that is for every student, every day. He lives that commitment by taking time to be at events like these. So I'd like to invite Dr. Roger Stanford, president of Western Technical College, to the podium. Let me add to Chad's and share my congratulations to our graduates today. This is wonderful. On behalf of Western, I'd like to congratulate you on your accomplishment, and it really is an accomplishment. The path of this night is always challenging, and I admire the resilience in each and every one of you. Uh, you're, you're finished. You're completed. You got it done. Western is proud to be part of your accomplishment, and we hope to be a part of your future as well. Our college is committed, Chad said it, every student every day. That's our challenge for every staff member in our organization. And we truly believe that. I know a number of our graduates here, they have already earned college credit. Some of you on the path have completed your high school credential and you've got some credits along the way. I'd like to personally, I mean very genuinely, personally invite you to continue your education journey at Western, whether that's a diploma or an associate degree. If you did this, you can do that and the jobs just get better. So once again, welcome and congratulations. Um, I'd like to ask, and 
and just allow us, you know, a lot of our staff are, are vested in your success. So I'm going to ask them, if, if you don't mind, Chad, um, but I, I'd like to ask our faculty, our staff, and our leadership uh, if they would stand. Right now, if you wouldn't mind, just stand. And I'd like to also ask our board chair, who is doing this tonight, for the district board. And can we give a round of applause? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Stanford. Thank you for everything you do on behalf of our students. Uh, I get to introduce someone new to our graduation this year. Uh, this has been Dr. Kat Lineker's first year at Western. Uh, and I am grateful to say she has proven to be a champion for students at every turn. It's my pleasure to welcome her to the first of many GED agency graduations. Please welcome Dr. Kat Lineker. I would like to welcome not only all of our graduates, but all of you that are in the audience that are here with them to celebrate the journey that they've had. And I just want to echo a little bit of what Chad said, and that what you have done, what you have accomplished, matters more for you than you know, and for those that come after you. So the youngest of five, and of the five of us, four walked the journey that you walked, and they graduated with an HED, or the equivalent of Canada. And I will tell you that that journey changed the lives for them and for their children, and now for their grandchildren. Be very proud of what you accomplished in your time here. The fact that many of you have also got college credit is just wow. Own it. Be proud of it and celebrate it. Um, I want to wish you the best and hope that you continue on achieving your future goals and enjoy your evening. Thank you, Dr. Lineker. So the single best way to understand this journey that we're all referring to uh, is to hear the stories that our students tell. Uh, so every year we look for some brave folks who are willing to get up in front of 400 of their friends or so uh, and tell us a little bit about themselves and why they got here. Uh, tonight we have three people who've uh, taken that opportunity. I'd like to introduce our first speaker tonight is Chinoa Borman. Hello, everyone. My name is Shanoa Borman, and I am so proud to be standing here today. I have worked very hard to achieve my GED. This never would have begun if it was not for a talk I had with my grandfather. He had told me that I had all the tools I needed to succeed. And you know what? He was right. He helped me to take the first steps towards bettering my future, and I'm so grateful to him and everyone who has helped me to achieve my goals. But let me back up a little bit and explain why I ended up dropping out of high school when I was 17. This happened because my parents could no longer afford to send me to my private high school any longer, and I ended up going to a public high school. When this first happened, I was very sad and upset, and I loved the school I had been attending, but I didn't, <coughs> but I didn't want to leave. <clears throat> I had went into the public high school with a little bit of a bad attitude, but I was 17, and the world revolved around me at this time in my life. I went for three weeks, and the whole time I was walking around with my head down, not really trying to make friends. I just didn't want to be there, plain and simple, so I just didn't go. I stopped going and stayed home to help the family with the farm and the family business of selling Christmas trees. The Christmas tree business has been in our family for five generations. We sell Christmas trees and wreaths. We have helped with different jobs since I was about eight or nine. I will say that making the first wreath of the season is always fun, but the hundred more that come after that, not so much. But the money we made each year helped us to have Christmas money. It made me understand that I had to work for all the things I want in life. Working in the family business gave me a great work ethic, and I have taken it with me to every job I have gotten. After the re-season was over, I went to work. I went to look around for work at my hometown, but I couldn't find anyone that would hire me. I didn't have any work experience, and I was a high school dropout. This made finding a job difficult. My cousin came that visit that summer, and we ended up getting hired at Noah's Ark in Wisconsin Dells as lifeguards. 
During that time, my parents had gone out to work in the oil field of North Dakota. After I finished working as a lifeguard, I came home to help take care of my three younger siblings with my older sister. I was turning 19 soon, and I was ready for something new. When I found out my mom was moving home, I called my father and asked if I could move to North Dakota with him. I moved out the day after my 19th birthday and started my next adventure. I applied for a job at a grocery store in North Dakota, and I got the job. After working in North Dakota for nearly two years, I moved to Washington and tried to find work. But this became a hard task. After months of searching for work and struggling financially, I got hired at Domino's Pizza. I worked there for a year until a friend invited me to come work in the oil field of Wyoming. I moved there in high hopes of finding a good paying job and making good money. But I arrived right when the boom was coming to an end. Work was scarce and I struggled to get by until I found work as a cook at a small restaurant where I worked through the winter and soon found a bartending job that played more plus tips. Bartending turned out to be really good tips, so I was super excited. But having to deal with all the intoxicated people made me not want to bartend ever again. <laughs> I soon found a job working as a substitute lunch lady. I started working at the school and loved the work and my coworkers, but it was not full-time work, and I picked up custodial work on the side. I soon found a full-time job with benefits at the hospital and instantly enjoyed working there and loved having a full-time work. The employees at the hospital were so awesome and became a substitute family to me. For many reasons, for personal reasons, I didn't work there long, however. In the end, I called my father to ask if I could come back home, where I became a caregiver to my little sister, who has Down syndrome. I now work every day with my sister, Riversong, who is 19 years old. It is a job that I could not have dreamed of. I remember being a little kid and wishing on stars for a little sister. I love working one-on-one -on -one with her each day. I have always been close with my sister, Riversong, and I am so grateful to have the opportunity to work with her. But I also have to give thanks to my youngest brother, Shayton, who was so much help as I worked on my DED. If it wasn't for him helping me study for my math test, I probably never would have passed. I want to thank him for all the early mornings I woke him up with math questions. I give so much <laughs> credit to my sister, my brother, my father, and as I said earlier, my grandfather for inspiring me to work to earn my DED. I also want to thank the three amazing teachers for taking the time to help me when I needed it. I appreciate my family fr and friends for supporting me through this journey. My journey took me from high school dropout to wreath maker to lifeguard to grocery store clerk to fast food service to bartender to lunch lady to cook and to lastly caregiver. After going through all these jobs and life experience, I discovered my passion for cooking and found the determination to better myself by getting my GED and continuing on to college. <clears throat> my support system was such an important part. The more I worked at my education, the better I felt about myself. Just a little encouragement and support has helped me to start the process, but I needed to believe in myself and I had to put the hard work in to make this dream possible. I want to encourage others to pursue their dreams too. I've been working towards going to college already and I've received six credits. It has been a grand adventure and I want to continue to learn and expand my knowledge. I'm so excited to be attending the Culinary Arts Program at Western Technical College this fall. And I want to thank everyone for coming out this evening. Thank you, Shanoa. You're good. Um, I certainly won't forget your name again after that story. So. Uh, uh, we talk all the time about all of the life experience that our students bring to our program. Uh, what a wonderful example of that. Uh, our next speaker this evening uh, is someone I met a while back. Uh, I am lucky enough to get to meet new students that come into our department. Uh, I'm not sure if they consider it lucky, but they're, the first thing they have to do is uh, meet with the dean and the associate dean, and we talk about uh, what they've done and what they want to be when they grow up. I met this next gentleman uh, and immediately knew he was going to do great things. Uh, he's also become a bit of a minor celebrity in the last week or so with an article in the Lacrosse Tribune. Uh, please welcome to the stage, Ken Hart. Good evening, friends, family. Sorry, let me start over. <laughs> Good evening, family, friends, fellow graduates, faculty, and guests. I am glad to be speaking at the 2019 graduate ceremony. 
I am very proud to be one of many sitting here today receiving their diploma. This new chapter in life for all of us is eye-opening. Through my time at Western Technical College, I found the pres per persistence, determination, and eight hours a week of schooling played a big role in the comp completion of my high school diploma. Just remember, anyone can learn if they put their mind to it. My journey up to this point has not been an easy one. As a young child, my parents split up, so I never really had that father figure in my life to guide me into the right direction. For my mom, she had to raise five other children, not including me, and I could see that it was hard for her. We moved every two years to a different town in central Wisconsin, which was hard for me because I would start making new friends and then we would move again. So yes, it was hard to make any friends as a child. When I started to get into trouble with the law, which led my mom to putting me in the group home in several different foster homes. I was in foster care for approximately seven to eight years of my life as a child <clears throat> between the ages of 10 and 18. These were the hardest times of my life because I only was able to see my family a handful of times. This was, a, this was hard as a kid because these times were when I needed my family the most. Nevertheless, I can say is that a positive foster care placement from the age of 13 to 17 helped me the man I am today. After facing so many challenges growing up at the age of 24, I started to take my GED course at Western. At that time, I was starting a family and working full time. Over the next 10 years, my family, job, and life in general took precedence over my education. In the fall of 2018, I started attending class again. I had initially just planned to get my high school diploma while at Western Technical College. Then I discovered that, then I discovered what was available to me through credit for prior learning. I felt, I felt, I feel grateful that I could use my previous and current job to, de to demonstrate competence for education to sales management coursework, which I plan to pursue at Western Technical College this fall. From here on out, I will not let my past be my excuse. My past has gotten in the way and clouded my future long enough. I am building a better foundation, a better future for my family and myself. All of us graduating will go on to be better people because of our hard work at Western Technical College. I know now that I will succeed at life, so at life. So no more excuses from this guy. <coughs> at this time, I would like to thank the teaching staff at Western Technical College, Dan Kern, Ephraim Gelfman, Tanya Roper, and Megan Burke. I could not thank you guys and gals enough. Most importantly, I would like to thank my wife, Amanda Hart, my children, Addison and Landon Hart, my in-laws, Bill and Norma Paff, and my father, Kenneth Hart, for pushing me to go back to school. Without, without you all supporting me, I do not think I would have ever made it back to school and achieved my dreams of getting my high school diploma. Congratulations, class of 2019. That was great, Ken. We really appreciate it. Um, actually, remind me, I, I did want to make, uh, before I go on to our last speaker, is, is Ray Slattery here somewhere? Where's Ray? Um, so we mentioned tonight that lots of folks in this graduating class and lots of folks in our program are earning credit before they graduate. Uh, and the pioneer for helping us doing that is that guy, Ray Slattery, who is open-minded, strengths-based, and an incredible supporter of pre-college students. So can we thank Ray, please? So when I introduce student speakers, I often uh, am tempted to say, up next is my friend so-and-so. Um, our last speaker really is my friend. Uh, I've watched her grow and develop, and we are so grateful that not only has she graduated and moved on, uh, we liked her so much she's working in our office. Uh, our last speaker this evening is Andrea Vassi.
Good evening, students, teachers, staff, friends, and family. I'd like to start tonight with an important verse from Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. This verse is important to me because it reminds me of who I used to be and who I am now. Never once in my life did I think I would be graduating, let alone ask, be asked to speak in front of my peers. It is a great honor to stand before my teachers, Western staff, my family, my friends, and fellow students. Thank you for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Before Christ changed my heart, school wasn't a priority for me. Looking back, the HSED program gave me the opportunity to become accountable. I had to show up every day, and while attending, my desire to learn increased, as did my motivation to succeed. In the beginning, I was in a group session, and we had to pass every five weeks. In the third session, I relapsed and went back to jail. When I got out of jail, I came right back, and Western welcomed me with open arms and let me pick up right where I left off. But this time, I was working by myself. This is where I really was able to gain the fundamentals and confidence that I could do this. Every student in this room has earned the right to be proud of themselves. Personally, my road to graduation was not a straight stretch. I had some trees fall down and some windy roads. Failing was not an option for me, and that motivation became a hunger for success. I know this road hasn't been easy for you either. I've learned, some more, I've learned some important things along the way. I've learned to speak up for myself. No one is going to know how to help me. I've learned that I, I have people that I can trust, and Western has been a great place to find a support system. My advice to you is develop your own support system wherever you may go next. This door may be closing, but there are many doors to be opened. Each student here has a purpose, a path that they are destined to take, and doors that they are meant to open. However, free will can be a stumbling block. Sometimes our life choices, like having kids, needing to work, addictions, or hardships, can cause us to pause in our journey. My advice is to search your heart and your desires and create a life plan. Share your plan with a mentor or somebody who is a positive support. Set long and short-term goals. List possible obstacles and then list tactics that can break down those barriers. Personally, this has worked for me. It takes time, though. Don't give up because you're worth it and I'm worth it. We are here tonight to celebrate our accomplishments. This is a big deal. It's a great honor to be graduating with you all. Some of you are not just graduating with your high school diploma. You've received college credits and certificates. We not only have the strength to go on, we have the skills to do it. I have a job at Western. I'm in college. I am free from my addiction. My family has seen me fall on my face and now they're watching me get my high school diploma. I can do all things through him who strengthens me, Philippians 4.13. Best wishes to all of you. Congratulations, 2019. And just because I probably haven't embarrassed Andrea enough yet this evening, uh, Andrea was kind enough to join a team from Western this winter uh, and travel to Washington, D.C. Uh, to advocate for our students and for our efforts to uh, do exactly what we're doing here tonight. So thank you for that. How about one more round of applause for all three student speakers tonight? Our keynote speaker tonight is Amanda Coughlin. I first met Amanda... Uh, when she was Western's student ambassador and was asked to speak at the 2017 college commencement ceremony. Uh, she made what may have been a tactical error and mentioned during her speech that she was an HSED graduate. Uh, I sort of tackled her uh, as we left the stage and said, we have to get you at our, our GED graduation. Um, I'm very grateful she's taken that opportunity. 
Amanda's path to an HSED and college graduation uh, was not a straight line, nor was it easy at some points. Uh, it involved starting and stopping and starting, maybe more than once. Eventually, Amanda used her HSED to enroll at Western and earn an associate's degree as a computer support specialist. Since graduation, Amanda has worked at Pishke Motors, where she started in 2017 in a variety of roles, and she's been recently promoted to sales professional. It is always a pleasure to have one of our own at graduation. So please welcome Amanda Coughlin. Good evening. I want to start off by first congratulate, congratulating all of our graduates. I know from, this, from experience that this isn't always the easiest road. You may not fully realize it yet, but you've just opened a whole new world of opportunities. You're no longer limited to the jobs you can take or the education you may wish to pursue. If you're anything like me, then this is a fresh start. I'd like to share with you today some of my experiences before and after completing my high school equivalency diploma. Keep in mind that many other things have happened in my story, but for the sake of time, I'll try to summarize as best as I can and give you a picture of what things were like for me during very critical points in my life that could have helped to shape or destroy me. So let's start at the beginning. When I was five years old, I was diagnosed with attention deficit disorder and prescribed medication. Throughout my early years, I had a harder time than most concentrating in class, studying, and completing assignments. I was put in special programs that were designed to help me succeed, but it made me resentful. So I rebelled in high school, and this quickly landed me in a lot of trouble. I was failing nearly all of my classes by middle school, high school, not because I couldn't do the work or because I couldn't follow the rules. I just didn't care. The school tried several different things to get me back on track, but during my 10th grade year, when their warnings and punishments <laughs> proved fruitless, I was sent to a school for kids with behavioral issues. I actually did very well there, and I was told that I could return to my high school for my junior year. But by this point, I started to understand that there was no way that I was graduating with my high school class. Instead of getting held back, which was what was going to happen, I decided to attend an alternative learning school that would allow me to graduate faster if I was willing to put in the time and the effort. I tried for a while, but eventually I just felt like I was never going to get there. And I convinced myself that I didn't need to have a high school diploma because no job that I was ever going to get was going to require me to have it. And I was never going to go to college anyways. So what was the point? So the next part of my story is something that I don't share very often. There are some people here tonight who've gotten to know me very well throughout the years, and for most of them, this is gonna be the first time hearing this part of my past. It's not something that I'm proud of, but it is a part of my story, and there may be someone here tonight that can relate, and which that's why that I'm choosing to share this now tonight with you. By 17, I dropped out of high school altogether. I moved in with a boyfriend to northern Minnesota. Not long after that, I was introduced to the drug methamphetamine. At that time, I really didn't even know what it was. It started off as something that my friends and I did on the weekends. A few months later, my boyfriend and I broke up, and I decided to move in with some friends to Las Vegas. They had been living there for quite a while, and they were already very heavily addicted to methamphetamine. And it didn't take long before I was right there with them. For about eight months, we did it all day, every day. And I started to become a person that I didn't recognize. I decided I needed to get away or I'd never be able to stop. So I moved back home and I just quit, cold turkey. I didn't know how dangerous that was to just stop. 
that abruptly after doing it as excessively as we were. And within a week of moving home, I was rushed to the ER. I was jaundiced. I felt like I was dying. There was a couple trips before that I was finally admitted. My liver was failing. My spleen was on the verge of rupturing. And the diagnosis was that I had the worst case of mono that they had ever seen. I never told anybody that I had this addiction. I never told my family. I didn't tell the doctors. It wasn't in my system anymore because it would have just worked its way out. So they didn't know. I almost died. But really, I was one of the lucky ones. I got off the drug and away from it. Even though I survived, I didn't stop doing reckless things. Within a few months of moving back to the Midwest, I answered an ad that said, awesome job, in the newspaper. I took a bus, a Greyhound bus, and found out when I arrived in Topeka, Kansas, that I was going to be selling magazines door to door around the country. My first day on the job, I was told that we were going to sell magazines on an Air Force base <coughs> and that two of my crew members were going to have to sneak on base because they didn't have proper identification. Despite that and a few other sketchy situations, I stayed and I worked with the company for a little over a year alongside a lot of other misfits like myself from around the country. I traveled and stayed in at least 25 different states during that time. And during my last month, I was in Georgia and I knocked on a woman's door named Renee. She and her husband were bail bondsmen bounty hunters. They had two kids at home, five dogs, and a cat. After meeting her, we kept in contact for a while. And when I decided to leave the company about a month later, she invited me to move in with her and her family. She knew that I didn't have my high school diploma, so she helped me enroll into a GD program down there in Georgia. And she got me working at her family's uh, pizza place. I stayed there for, for quite a while. Uh, I was actually about a month away from graduating with my, <laughs> HS, or with my GED before I decided to move back home. So I quit. <laughs> when I moved back, I really didn't do much except work. I was 20 and I finally decided to come back to school and attend Western Technical College to finish my high school equivalency diploma. <coughs> I gave up several times before I finally completed my HSCD. It was about two years later. At that time, I had a roommate, Natasha, who was attending Western for her associate's degree in early education. I was working multiple jobs, and I wasn't really happy with where I was or where it seemed I was going. So one day, Natasha asked me the following question. Now that you have your HSCD behind you, what do you plan to do next? Is this what you want to do with the rest of your life? Are you happy? My answer was no. Natasha's question continued to resonate with me, and I finally started to think seriously about what my educational goals were and how to proceed. I enrolled in a program shortly after that conversation. Although my first program choice wasn't the right path, with each hands-on lab assignment and test, sparked something in me that I didn't have before. Confidence in my potential. <coughs> when I returned to school in 2016, I came back with a, sense of pur a renewed sense of purpose, and I became more present in my education and in the community here at Western. I found a family here not only in my classmates, but in the faculty, advisors, and staff through working as a work study in the IT department. In 2017, I had the honor of being nominated as the student ambassador for Western. I met a lot of really wonderful people, and I was given a lot of opportunities along with that role. I finally started to feel confident in my abilities. And I got to do things that I never thought possible before. Last year, I proudly completed my associate's degree as a computer support specialist. 
And I believe now that I can do anything that I set my mind to. I have a job I love with the best people that I could possibly hope to work with. And I work for people who truly value me and respect my time as a single parent. I'm at a point now where I really get to choose what I want to do. And I've actually turned down some pretty incredible opportunities because I finally understand my work. It's not something that I ever knew before. It's been a long road, but I'm really truly happy to be here. My life could have gone down a very different path. And I stand here today in a place in my life I never thought I would be, and I'm certain that it's only gonna get better from here. Now to the graduates. I want to offer you a piece of advice based on the experiences I've had and life lessons I've learned. No matter what you choose to do from here on out, don't make excuses. And don't do things halfway. Always, always live up to your full potential. Don't underestimate yourselves. And don't let anyone, especially yourselves, make you feel as though you're not good enough. Dive into everything you do, giving it your all, and you will succeed. Congratulations, class of 2019. Outstanding. Outstanding. And uh, Amanda, I guarantee that uh, your story touched more than one heart tonight, and that's thank you for your courage in sharing it. <laughs> so, uh, next, I'd like to invite Mrs. Angie Lawrence, chair of the Western Technical College District Board, to the podium to give the charge to the graduates on behalf of the board. Please welcome Angie Lawrence. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I would just like to first of all say thank you all so very much for all that you've done to be here tonight. And I would like to ask the graduates to stand up and turn around and applaud your family, your friends, your, your, the staff members, the faculty, everyone that has supported you to help you to get to this point tonight. So if you would stand, turn around, and give a round of applause to everybody that's here. So now you can turn back around, and then you'll have to sit down again. I'm sorry. So welcome and thank you, everyone, for coming and supporting the, graduate, the graduates tonight from Western. I would like to make a special acknowledgment to Veronica Phillips. She's a graduate tonight, and her name is not in the programs that you have, and we will reprint a program for Veronica, but I want to apologize that your name is not in the program tonight. Please accept our apologies. The graduation ceremony tells the world that you are ready for the next step in your life. It says you have complete, completed an important part of your learning process. We congratulate each of you on the completion of this phase of your education. I'd like to read a poem to you that I've had on my refrigerator throughout my life. It's written by Renee M. Bratlick, and it's called Everything Will Fall Into Place. Life is like a giant puzzle. Through our futures may not be clear, though our futures may not be clear, or turn out exactly as we expected, each of us has the strength inside to put the puzzle together. We just have to look for all of the right pieces. It may seem impossible, but keep striving. Life's pieces have a way of falling into place when you least expect it. Tonight, you have reached a milestone and added a piece to your life puzzle. We're all different shapes and sizes, and our journey is very different, but this is your puzzle to embrace in your journey through life. You should be proud of your accomplishment. Use your education well. 
within your career, your family, and your community. Make a difference to everyone that is in your life each day. The world will become a better place because of the impact that you make on the others that you touch. Enjoy this day of achievement and the opportunities that lie before you. On behalf of the Western Technical College Board, congratulations to you for the dedication and <coughs> perseverance that you've shown to bring you to this day. Each of you has met the needed requirements, and I am pleased and proud to recommend the class of 2019 for graduation. Will the graduates please rise? So I have a, just like four or five more speakers before we bring you up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> right, I mean, it's, it's the part you've all been waiting for. Just a couple of directions so we can run things smoothly. Uh, those of you that are graduates, uh, we'll have ushers helping you to get where you got to go. Uh, make sure that you have a name slip with you and just follow their direction. Uh, when you come across stage uh, and you're done getting your picture taken, we just ask that you return to your seats so that we can uh, have you at the end of it. Friends and family, we will leave the stage up and the picture area up. So we would ask that you please leave the aisles clear and remain seated while the graduates are uh, going across the stage. We'll make sure that there's plenty of time for pictures this, later this evening. Uh, our graduates tonight will be introduced by two of our faculty members in Learner Support and Transition, Carla Walker and Betsy Breckenridge. Ladies. Sanoa Borman. <laughs> Ken Hart. Andrea Vassi. <laughs> Allison Barra. <laughs> Edgar Aguilara Salinas. Ellen Bram. Yes. Tanner Haynes. Maria Featherly. <laughs> Navette Schlafer. Michael Anderson. <laughs> 
Sí, ven. Cassie Worm. Congratulations to you. Lincardo Thompson. <laughs> AJ Mills. <laughs> Chia Vu. Rose Frogo. <laughs> Chloe Selig. Joe Vu. <laughs> Mary Jones. Troya Holfield. <laughs> Veronica Phillips. Carrie Kaminsky. Congratulations, Carrie. Nicole Rivera. William Schweisberger. <laughs> Eliza Brisky. Elena Thompson.
Tavius Goins. Emily Oliver. Congratulations, Emily. Kiari Davis. Tanya Newman. <laughs> Violet Johnson. Jessica Peterson. My Lee. Fuel. Daniel Abraham. Marcelino Alderete. Yeah. 
Anna, 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 Anna Karen Espinoza. Sarah Peterson. So uh, as we're waiting for Sarah to uh, hug everyone in the institution, uh, that's all right. It's a good night for hugs. It really is. Uh, before I let you go, I will take a brief moment uh, because this is the one event, all your right, stand up front, yeah. And say thank you. Uh, it is a privilege to be part of what you have done. It is an honor to be allowed into your lives, and we stand in awe of the things you have done and the things you are going to do. Graduates, if you would please rise. You can move your tassel from the left to the right. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2019. Okay, Len Carter, you win graduation. Um, all right, if folks could remain seated while the ushers show the graduates out, and then we'd welcome you all to join us in the lobby for our reception afterward. Thank you again, and have a wonderful night.